Hi, howdy, how y'all doing? It's Typical Mayo here, and today I'm going to be teaching y'all a little bit about UEFN. I just got UEFN. I've never done anything like this. I downloaded it when it dropped, and I've been learning ever since. And as you guys will see, I've got some pretty unique stuff built already, and uh, I don't know what I'm doing. So, therefore, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So, let's go ahead and jump into it, and I'm going to show you guys how to make an object move such as a door or a wall or whatever it is you want. So like say you wanted to animate a vault door and uh, hook it to a key card. I can show you how to do that. It's very simple. So here in our example, I'm actually working on my map and I'm trying to make Kevin move. I'm going to make him move up out of the way and he is going to be activated by this switch here that takes a key card that I've already set up. I can show you all how to do that as well later. But I'm actually going to be hooking it to two different things. I'm also going to be hooking it to a button that is right there. And so that way you can open from the inside and you don't have to have the card. This is going to be a back way into uh, my control room for my Island 51 underground map. And this is kind of a secret back door. Uh, it's pretty overpowered, but I love it. Um, I'm going to put some safeguards in. That way, you know, everybody has a fair chance to get at it but I'm going to keep that a secret for now. But let's go ahead and get into this. So what we're going to want to do is going to go into here where we got all of our content. You may not have anything there yet if uh, you're just learning, but you don't want to be in all. You want to be in your actual project. And then you're going to want to right click here and create a cinematic level sequencer. And then I'm going to name this Kevin because you are going to need to find this here in a minute. So that'll make it easy to find if it's got a name that you know. So we got Kevin. We're going to want Kevin to move. So now that we have that, we're going to want to go over here to all. Search up sequencer. And cinematic sequencer right there. Go ahead and drag it in. Uh, you can put it about anywhere, really. Uh, this won't be visible during game. This is just... Uh, something that activates what you're going to be doing. So, now that we've got that there, go ahead and go back, go back to our content. Let's get Kevin. Where did Kevin go? He's right here. So we're going to double click on Kevin. We are going to add a track, actor to sequence. We have to find the name of the object we want to move. So, luckily, in my case, it is Kevin. He is Kevin the Cube. So therefore, if you're trying to move like a wall or something, I would use a different wall that you're not using a lot of, so that way it's easier to find and you don't have to go through a big list. Okay, so now you can see that we're selected. We've got Kevin the Cube, our track added. We're going to add this track to transform. So, 0, 0, 0 is our base place. That's where we want it to be during gameplay until it is triggered. That's where it is right now. So the first thing we're going to want to do is click this little middle button right here. It's a key. Added the key. So that's where we start. This is your length. I like to have it pretty short because this is a secret door that's supposed to slam back down. So the animation will end here. You can extend that way far so that way it stays open for long periods of time. Probably even the whole match if you wanted to. Uh, but that's not what I'm going to be doing here. So then I'm going to move this to probably about halfway just for demonstration you can play with that after you figure it out uh, but then we're going to want to move Kevin to where we want him finally positioned which will be up we're going to want him pretty much all the way up to where you can just kind of see him that ought to be fine so then we're going to go back down here and we're in the middle now right here on our timeline so we're going to add another one. So this is the length and then it will end here. I'm actually going to shorten it so it snaps back closed kind of quick. That way you have to rush to get in. Uh, you can go ahead and click back over here to the beginning of the animation and you can click play and watch it. See how it goes. So that's what your animation is going to look like. 
and then it's going to snap back down even though it doesn't in that animation. You'll see so here in the game in just a few minutes when I show you. But now that we have that done, we can link it to this thing here. So let's go back to our content browser over here. Now that Kevin is programmed, we know what Kevin's movement is. We're going to click on our audio or our uh, sequencer here. So over here on the right, under advanced, you're going to want to search for your sequence, which is Kevin. So that's right here. That's the one we just programmed, that movement. So now that it's programmed to that, this is our Kevin animation that's hooked to that. Now, the way that we trigger it is right here. What do we want to make play it? So in a simple situation, what we can just do here is go on up to our button here. And I'm going to have to click on that because I clicked something else to get away. We'll get it here. Okay, so now that we're back on that, you can see on the right. And we got our button in view. One. So just click this little dropper here and click on your button. And now your button is linked. So how do you want to activate it? There's different options on certain ones, but a button is simple. It's either on or off. So on interact. So now anytime that you click that button, that door is going to do that animation and then snap back down. And, but the only way to get in there to that button is also with this thing down here. So over here on the same tab, while we're still on our sequencer, go down here, add another play function. So we have another way to play it. And then you're, paint your little dropper right there, click it on that. So now you can see it's a conditional button. So when on activated. So therefore this will also, when you have the card, you push the card in and it will create that animation and you can get through or send your teammates through. Uh, so that's kind of a backdoor and a little bit of a preview into one of my uh, new maps. Uh, it's the one I've worked the most on. I've learned basically everything I know on here. So it's all underground. You won't be able to get outside, but as you can see, it's underground area or underground island 51. So you can tell the theme. We've got a lot of secrets in here. We've got bases that are blocked off so you can't get in and spawn camp with multiple exits. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on in here. Uh, a lot of sci-fi alien type stuff. A lot of spawners for, well, I guess you'll find out when we play the game. But, uh, Definitely a lot of secret rooms, secret entrances, secret weapons. Uh, uh, I think a lot of you are going to enjoy it. All right, so here's a first look at some gameplay of the actual map. I've been testing it a little bit. Now they've got it pretty much built. I've just got to do some cleaning up on it and fix some settings. So, I mean, hey, I don't hit all my shots, but I do all right here and there. I probably would have lost that one if he hadn't blew himself up. But uh, as you see, we've got plenty of different weapon categories in here, and this isn't even the half of it. But uh, we can hire guards. We've got the guard room in here. It's all set up. This is all custom built. None of this is that prefab stuff. And uh, as you can see, we got guards guarding that door for that animation we made. And if you don't have sprint, you're not going to make it. It conked me on my head and kept me down. So now I got to wait till that recharges. But anyway, you're going to see our switch work again. And this isn't the button, but it's linked to the same thing. That's the sequence we programmed. And if you make it through just in time, Hey, we timed that one pretty perfect. I'm not opening that back up. But as you can see down there at the end of the hallway, you can get some heals. And we'll go on up into the control room. If this looks like a map that you might enjoy playing, uh, like I said, uh, I'm going to be interested in uh, getting some testers on the map. So if you have a Fortnite account that has adult authentication, you know, like the 2FLA stuff and all that, I can get you guys a code. And we could talk about, you know, playing it all together, set up a time or something. So that way we can actually test the map and see how it performs. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and just subscribe and mention me down in below, you know, comment on it. I'll see it. Oh, I got to get rid of those uh, bases over there. See, just little things like that I still have to fix and any problems we might find. I would really like to get those tested out before I publish them. I can't publish right now anyway until we get to a thousand subs. But this is map three, and I've just got a few things to clean up on each of them, so I'm going to have at least three maps, if not more, ready by the time I get to my thousand subs and apply for my creator code, which will be Mayo if I can get it.
Use creator code MAYO in the item shop. Not yet, but someday. What the hell are y'all still doing here? Do you not see that stuff down there? Get to clicking. I appreciate y'all. Typical MAYO out.